Oh, there's, there's no firewood here. I better go look for some in the fields. Then Toba placed the fish inside the basin while he went to the field to collect the firewood. I will eat well today, said Toba while carrying the firewood behind the house. He lit the fire, but when Toba went to take the fish, he was surprised. The fish had vanished and instead there were pieces of gold inside the basin. Where's my fish? And whose gold is this? Then, Oba opened the door of his room. He was surprised. There was a tall woman combing her long hair in front of a mirror. This woman is so beautiful. Hey, who are you? Asked Toba. The woman turned around and Toba was fascinated. Toba had never seen a woman as beautiful as her. I am the incarnation of the fish you caught earlier. The gold coins were my scales. Toba was confused. The woman smiled. I am cursed by the gods to be a fish, but thanks to you, the curse is gone now. Let's go to the kitchen. I'll make you food. You must be hungry. Toba followed her to the kitchen. Deftly, immediately prepared food for Toba. He was amazed by the woman's brilliance in the kitchen. He said to himself, If only she wanted to be my wife. Apparently, the woman could read Toba's... But I have one condition, said the woman. After finishing his food, to hear what she said. Say it. What's the condition? If we get married later, never bring up... I will be the only one who suffer the consequences if you break this agreement. Toba agreed. For him, it was an easy condition. Toba and the woman finally married. Toba was working so hard in the fields to fulfill their daily needs. Then his wife became pregnant. Toba was pleased. He couldn't wait for the birth of his child. Not long after, a baby boy was born. Toba named him Samosir. This is our collective history. Toba tried to be patient with Samosir's behavior. Whenever Toba worked in the field, Samosir didn't want to deliver the food his wife cooked for him. In the end, it was Toba's wife who delivered the food to Toba. My wife. You can't spoil Samasir forever. If he continues to be spoiled, it will be harder to control him. Toba's wife smiled and said, Be patient, my husband. One day, Samasir will change. I've been patient enough with him, my wife, but my patience also has a limit. One day, Toba's wife persuaded Samasir to take food to the fields for Toba. At first, Samosir refused, but his mother continued to convince him. Finally, Samosir agreed. All right, Mom, I will deliver this food to Father. But on his way, Samosir played with his friends instead. After playing, Samosir felt hungry. I'm starving. Ah, I will eat this food. <laughs> Samosir then ate the food that was supposed to be for his father, and left him only a little. In the fields, Toba couldn't wait any longer. He was starving. Moreover, he didn't have time to have breakfast, because a lot of work needed to be done that day. 
In the distance, Samosir came running. Where have you been, Samosir? Daddy has been waiting for you a long time. Samosir did not answer and immediately gave him the food. Toba was surprised to find only the leftovers. Hey, Samosir, have you eaten Daddy's food? Your behavior is out of line. You little fish, come here. Toba was angry at Samosir without realizing he had spoken of the restrictions his wife had previously warned him of. Toba hit Samosir until he cried loudly. Samosir then ran to the house. Mother! <laughs> Mother! <laughs> at home, Samosir told everything to his mother. said that I am the child of a fish. Is it true, Mom? Toba's wife felt sad because Toba had brought up her origins. Then she told Samosir to run up the hill. Samosir, quick! Run up to the hill, son, before the flood comes. Okay, Mom? Samosir obeyed her. Immediately, the sky was dark and lightning struck. A flood appeared from the river. Toba's wife suddenly jumped towards the tide and became a fish again. Toba, who was working in the fields, was shocked to see the flood coming towards him. What's this water? Why is this happening? He didn't have time to escape. Toba drifted and sank into the flood. Soon the surge flooded the entire valley and left only the top of the hill in the middle where Samosir was hidden. The flood had created a lake and Samosir became an island. That is why the lake is named Lake Toba and the island in the middle is called Samosir. That's one of Indonesian folklore. Uh, it's from North, Sum North Sumatra. It's the origin of Tobalik. Do you know Tobalik? It's one of popular lake in Indonesia. And now let's have um, Hassan. Do you want to share a story from Pakistan? Um. There is a problem that I have. I don't learn any thing. You can read. I don't learn. If you, if you, if you cannot share screen, you can read the story. Okay. All right. Okay. I will tell it in Urdu. एक कछुआ था जो बहुत बहुत आहिस्ता चलता था और एक खरगोश था जो इतना तेज चलता था और जंगल के सारे जानवरों का मजाक उड़ाता था एक दिन कछुए ने कहा के वो खरगोश के साथ एक दौड़ लगाएगा रेस फिर खरगोश ने मार लिया अगले दिन जब रेस शुरू हुई तो खरगोश तेजी से भाग गया और कछुआ वहीं रह गया जब आधा रास्ता हो गया रेस का तो खरगोश थक गया तो उसने कहा कि कछुआ तो बहुत आहिस्ता चलता है तो मैं यहाँ आराम कर लेता हूँ फिर वो आराम करके सो जाता है करते करते सो जाता है उन्नी देर में कछुआ वहां आ जाता है और फिर उसे देखता है सोते हुए छुप आराम आराम से चल के वो उससे गुजर के चले जाता है फिर जैसे ही वो रेस खत्म होने वाली होती है खरगोश उठता है और फौरन से भागता है 
फिर वो देख लेता है कि कछुआ तो जीत गया फिर उसे एहसास होता है कि जानवरों का मजाक नहीं उड़ाना अरे बस ऐसी रखो कैसी रखो मैम मैम माई स्टोरी नेम इज द्राइड वंस अपॉन अ टाइम देयर लिव द शेफर्ड boy who was bored watching his flock on the hill to amuse himself he shouted wolf wolf the sheep are being chased by the wolf the villagers came running to help the boy and save the sheep they found nothing and the boy just laughed looking at their angry faces do not cry wolf when there's no wolf boy they said angrily and left the boy just laughed at them after a while he got bored and cried wolf again fooling them again the villagers warned the boy a second time and left the boy continued watching the flock after a while he saw a real wolf and cried loudly wolf please help the wolf is chasing the sheep help but this time no one turned up to help by the evening when the boy did not return to did not return home the villagers wondered that hap- what happened to him and went up the hill the boy sat on the hill weeping why did not you come when i called you when there there was a wolf he asked angrily the flock is scattered an old villager approached him and said people would not believe liars even when they tell truth we will look for your sheep tomorrow morning let's go to home now yeah kar sakange moral of the story is lying breaks trust nobody trust a liar even when he is telling truth thank you arus for sharing the story and that's a really Tell me what you miss it. Okay, now let's have Dila. Hello, my name is Dila. I'm 11 years old. My hobby is swimming. My favorite color is blue. I want to tell the story of Malin Kundang for from what folklore? Folklore from West Sumatra, Indonesia. A long time ago, there's a widow with her son named Malin Kunda. They live in a hut in the village near the sea. They were very poor. Malin Kunda thought, "If I stay here, I want a better life. I have to live this village and." Look for a job. His mother was said to hear it, but she knew the Malin Kundang was right. So she let him go. After her son had left Malin Kundang, Malin Kundang. Mother went to the beach every day. She had her son would return soon. At night, she would pray for her son's safety. She would ask the captain of the ship whether he saw her son or not. 
Bansi, Bansi got no news about Malin Kunyang. After years, when she was very old, a captain of a ship told her, Malin Kundang, I met him so months ago. He is now married to a beautiful girl. She is the daughter of a wealthy man. Malin Kundang's mother was very happy to hear it. Thank you, God. She prayed she was sure that Mount Kundang was returned home one day. One morning, a big beautiful ship dock. A young couple stood at the dock. They wore beautiful clothes. Mount Kundang's mother cried joyfully, Mount Kundang, my son, you are my home. She hungered the, the young man. Mount Kundang did not believe her. He thought, this can be my mother. She was a strong woman when I applied. But his wife said angrily, Why? 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 you tell me that your mother is poor and old? They spitted on the old woman. The old woman cried. She could not believe what she heard. Malin, I'm your mother. But Malin Kundak did not please it. He was embarrassed to have an old mother. So he kicked and the old woman and yelled at her. Go away, ugly woman. My mother does not look like you at all. The woman fell and ground. She cried. The she prayed, my dear God, if there really is my son, punish him. Soon, suddenly, the west turned the storm. Big face hit the shore with a loud noise. They hid everything from big ships to coconut trees along the shore. The thunder storm was a first one. The storm stood in the morning, but the villagers called she was like storm hand done. Not far from the shore, there were rocks that looked like secrets and the location of a ship. People believed that it was Mount Kundang's ship, and Mount Kundang said into a God bless him. Coral magic. Uh, as a child, never, as a child, never forget a girl who always evil. Long time ago, la living a humble of farmers. They live in a village near the forest. They live happy. And but to Nati, they have not a child yet. Every day they clean. To the good, the they pray to the God. They pray to be soon be a child. One day a giant as is where he preside. Giant then provide them with feed cucumber. Plant seeds of this 
Let them you will soon get a female kid, child, sight the giant. Thank you, giant. Sight the couple. But there is condition at the age of 17 years, the child salt giving to me. The giant replied, they agree because it died. Then and white in the cucumber months and then a cucumber called color. So in the is found in fans of women who are very poor. Pupil was very happy they gave the name of the baby Timon Mus. Year after year after year passed, Timon Mus grew into a beautiful girl. Both parents are very proud of him, but they become very afraid because in the anniversary, Timon Mus at seventeen, the giant will back. The giant take back that. That promise to take Timon Mas. They call for the doc doctor. My grill, take this. Suicide while giving a cloth head. This will help fight the giant. Now free as, as soon as possible. The site to Evan Timon must immediately fled. Giant Ram just immediately Timon must near the giant. Timon must take the half salt from the spats it to the giant. Suddenly, a white sea also unfold giant force. To swim with great stiff feet. Timon must run again, but Dian successful come closer. Timon must again talking desert object from a Cloth bag. He took the handful Kili. Kili throws to the giant. At on the three branches and struck on of the giant trap. Giant tried in in pain. Timon must while run to save her son. By the giant is really strong. He was again nearly captured. Capture the moon map is under a red cucumber. It was grow very knowledgeable, giant, fantastic, and hungry. He also ate the fresh. Uh, he, uh, he also ate. For us, a giant can have a
the field was and drove in a month so the brown demon for it is salt not intention words Miss Kathy, hello, or it golden Java. I threw my laptop email. I can open email. And from email, let's help to you. Okay. Tada. The students promise to see you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Let's have a uh, uh, hi. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Sadaf, yes, you can go. No, but... You want to share screen, Sadaf? As a movie, I will see. Okay, I'm back. I'm not going to go to the movie. Okay. Uh, Sadaf, are you there? One minute. Oh, okay. Sure. Take your minute, Sadaf. Okay. Well, uh, everyone, we are with um, Mrs. Catherine from Tanzania, and I'm really happy to have them. Uh, set up you on already yet? So let's have Miss Catherine first, or hello, set up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. If you're ready, just go ahead. Yes. Um, I didn't make a PPT of international collaboration. Just this, I'm going to talk about international collaboration. Okay. If you cannot share a screen, you can read instead your story set up. So. Mine just want to. International collaboration in higher education leads to break skills and knowledge. The free exchange of ideas and and join bonds between nations and nations, but it begins with connections between people.
Yes, how are you? International collaboration is in higher education leads to a breakthrough in knowledge, the free exchange of ideas, and enjoying bonds between institutions and nations. Between, but it begins with connections between people. Yeah, you can you can connect. You can proceed. I think we we can proceed in by using the phone. It is not easy to connect in a. Why if we can use the phone, Uri? If we find this difficulty of sending, let us use the phone. Hello, Uri. <coughs> Hello. Yes, yes, Miss Catherine, yes. Let them... Let's start working on that. I did. On mobile. Oh. Give it to one one another can pass another to the students when they're making presentation. Maybe because of time, let us start in it by using the phone. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so Dev, let's have Miss Catherine first because she is now in the classroom. So after Miss mm -hmm. Catherine, you can continue your story. Is it okay, Sada? Yes. yes, it is here. Now I get it. Email. Let us to open while we are we are we are we are proceeding in a. Is it possible? Can I proceed to our opening the meeting in a in a in a in a, in a PT? Yeah, we can do it. Okay. So um yes, yes Ada. Okay, we, we about I didn't make the presentation, but I'm just going to read. Uh, okay, Sadaf, let's have Miss Catherine first, okay? Yeah, okay, Sadaf, uh, let's have Miss Catherine first. Okay, Miss Catherine, you can go. Okay, let me let I introduce to you the three students who are going to make the presentation of their story today. They're going to use three language, explain the story. The the, right. this, the focus story in Tanzania. Yeah. Yeah, that will be great. In this is Junior the one who got to explain the story in, in a traditional language? That is the mother tongue language. And John got to explain the story in English language. And another one who is Alexander will go to make a story in Kiswahili. Why we decided to use these three languages? Because here in Tanzania, we are, we are learning different language from traditional, traditional tribes. That is the mother tongue and when you have joined to the second uh, to the primary school you're supposed to learn kiswahili language which is the national language and you learn kiswahili by, <coughs> by we are teaching kiswahili by using we are learning all subjects in primary school by using kiswahili language the only english language is being taught as the subject the medium of communication in primary school is Kiswahili. After seven years, the students are supposed to join to the secondary school. 
In secondary school up to university level, they are supposed to learn English language. So all subjects, all subjects are taught by English language, except the Kiswahili sub. So we find that a student is changed directly from yes, uh, uh, supposed to change directly from using Kiswahili language and trying to English language as a Interesting. Because our students are taking a lot of time I think she got disconnected. Uh, Sada, if you can continue your story, please. I'm sorry. Me, should I start reading? Yes, yes, Sada. Okay. International collaboration in, in higher education leads to breakthroughs in knowledge, yes, 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 ideas, and enjoying bond yes. between institutions and nations. But it begins with connections between people. We, we are still struggling with network, network problem in our area. Yeah, I think it's common. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Sada, no, are you finished? Sada, are you finished? Yes. No, I'm not yet. I want to explain the historical background of why. Oh, yes. This okay, go ahead. In language history. <clears throat> okay, so um, you can find that because of these challenges that you are facing, the students are struggling much to acquire the English language what they're in the secondary school. So as teachers, we are forced ourselves to find different ways and the techniques that we can use to make the students be motivated to learn English language. So in my teaching experience, I try to think how students to be more motivated to learn English language is when I introduce to them the using of this multilingual storytelling. In this multilingual storytelling, they'll find that it is very easily to Speak their mother tongue language, but some of those that some of the students also they are struggling to find some of the vocabulary to find the words which they can use to narrate their story by using their mother tongue. This is the same to the Kiswahili, even though we are learning Kiswahili, but there are still there are some vocabulary that they need to find out in order to fix in their story, to make the story to be more interested and meaningful while they are speaking. So this forced them even to find some of the words when they go back to the English language. So after making those, uh, the, make those idea is when they decided that learning any language, you need to find some of the vocabulary to be interested to speak, to make uh, a good connection of idea 
by looking different sources that you can get the good connection of the words, which can help you to learn any other language. So that's why I introduced this storytelling, multilingual storytelling to the club. And today I have three students who they are going to narrate their stories in language. We're going to start. Is Joan going to start? So may I call upon Joan, who go to narrate a story in English language. Welcome, Joan. You need to introduce yourself and which level are you? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Alex, why don't you reply? Hello, everyone. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. I don't know how about you. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, you can continue to tell the story. My name is Gianni Steven Makere. I'm in Form 1 at La Crim Secondary School. I'm here to tell you a story about the sleep and the wind. Long time ago, there are lived the sleep and the wind. They were quarreling because of not knowing who is great in power. One day, they said that we should have a battle. They went to the forest. They saw a kid on the top of a tree. And they said, who will fall that kid on the top of the tree will be the one with the most powerful. Then the wind said, let me show you what I will do. The wind started to blow. It blow and blow and blow, but the kid held the tree very hard. Then the kid did not fall. And later on, sleep said, let me show you what I will do. The sleep started to make the sleep. The child fell dizzy and he fell down. So the wind said, ashamed, I am, you are the one with the most powerful. Then the wind went on ashamed. That is the end of my story. Thank you so much. Awesome. So may, may I call Alexander? I didn't introduce him at the beginning. Yeah, sure. Alexander is good. To narrate a story. Yeah. Alexander is going to narrate a story in Kiswahili language. Alexander, you are welcome. You can introduce yourself and start to narrate a story. Great. Okay. Thank you, Madam Catherine. Uh, my name is Alexander Stephen McGarry. I'm studying at the Cream Secondary School. I'm going to narrate that the story have been narrated by Joan in, in Kiswahili. Uh, hapo za mwanza kale palikuwepo na upepo na usingizi. Walikuwa wanataka kujuana nani mwenye nguvu zaidi kuliko mwingine. Wakamuona mtoto juu ya mti. Wakasema mtu ambaye ataweza kumwangusha huyo mtoto atakuwa ana, ni ana nguvu zaidi. Upepo ukasimwa unaanza. Upepo ukavuma, ukavuma, ukavuma. Lakini mtoto haku anguka chini. Mtoto alikuwa na nguvu akajishikilia kwenye mti. Usingizi ukaanza kufanya usingizi. Na mtoto akaanguka chini. Hapo upepo ukamwambia uka usingizi. Kwamba ye ndiyo ananguvu zaidi. Thank you, my story ended up there in the Swahili language. Thank you so much. Wow, it's okay. amazing. So we now not only learn English, but also uh, for the first time I heard about the Swahili language. Thank you so much for sharing it. Okay. So the last one is Junior. He's going to narrate a story, the same story, but it will be in mother tongue language. Welcome, Junior. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Yes, you can continue. Okay. My name is Junior Steve Makere. I'm studying in La Crim Secondary School at the class. 
Can I stop sharing? I'm going to put the story which is being related by my fellow in my in Hacha language. I'm start. Kare hayo yalingayo omuyaga negintiro. Wantunaga kumanya onuyana enguru. Wakarora kiguru omuti wakagamba. Onu wakambusi kuro kumuti muyana enguru. Omuyaga kugamba. Ngawanza. Omuyaga ukahota ukahota ukahota. Waka ukarosi. Usingizi kagamba. Tinga ngoroki. Usingizi kagala usingizi. Negitiro gawanza kukura negiti. Omura kigwentiro paka gaguansi. And that is my end of, of my story. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so it's uh, really enrich our knowledge about other people languages. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, that is what we, we're working in our group by emphasizing the students to find different ways that getting language awesome okay uh, well i want and to language in the country okay anyone want to share yeah. a story because previously uh we've done uh, sharing our story but yeah maybe uh, Sadaf, do you want to repeat your story or 